हेलो 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 वेलकम टू द फिफ्थ एपिसोड ऑफ द क्यूरियस सॉन्ग राइटर टुडे इज अ स्पेशल सॉन्ग फॉर मल्टीपल रीजंस वी गोना टॉक अबाउट क्या तुम नाराज हो गए तन्मया भटनागर सो आई टेल यू व्हाट व्हेन आई फर्स्ट हर्ड दिस सॉन्ग विद इन द फर्स्ट फ्यू सेकंड्स इट हैड अ सर्टेन क्वालिटी टू इट दैट काइंड ऑफ पुल्ड मी इनटू द सॉन्ग राइट अवे and i couldn't put a finger as to what it was uh, about this song and then when she starts singing uh, it does something to you uh, it does something to you that that's inexplicable the melody of the song the way she sings it there is a profound sadness to the song um and i spoke to tanmaya about this song in this episode and uh, So once out it's a deeply personal story it's like the least produced song uh, where you j- there's just vocals and guitars and you can even hear like uh, vehicles passing by that addition of the ambience to the song somehow makes it more personal and the fact that so many people resonated with the song is a testament to uh, honest song writing and uh, I'm not going to take much of your time uh, let's start episode 5 this song kind of comes from this again this experience you know music is just all these songs that we hear they are coming from experiences that people have you know kind of experienced <laughs> but um i i wrote this song when i wrote this song my my state of mind was you know uh, i was obviously not okay i wasn't feeling okay and that's also the times when i write when i don't feel okay i sit down with you know a piece of paper and i write about it and at that point of time i was kind of in a, an abusive relationship with someone and i didn't know what to do with my emotions i didn't know who to talk to so i just kind of talked to that piece of paper and i thought what are the things that i really want to say right now what is it that i'm actually feeling and that's how slowly slowly i kind of started writing this song as like this personal conversation that i wanted to have with that person ja ne pe to chhodo na aise kya tum na raas ho meri wajah se you know i'm trying to i'm singing that song to that person i'm asking him questions i'm asking telling him to let it be jaane do and you know these things that you would say in real life as well if you're having a fight with someone or if someone is getting upset with you about something so this relationship was obviously a very um difficult one for me um i'm sure it was also difficult for the other person but um But yeah I mean this uh, I wanted to also I wanted the song to also have like a message you know whenever I sing the song at a gig I always talk about the song and I always talk to the the audience and I tell them that I I was in an abusive relationship and it took me a long time to get out of it it took me a long time to realize that I didn't deserve to be in that kind of you know uh, environment and I thought that I deserved it and I that's why I didn't leave and I always you know say that if you are in a relationship which you think is abusive and someone is not treating you properly then best is to leave you know and not be subjected to any kind of abuse be it verbal or physical abuse or emotional abuse even so the song kind of comes from there and uh, when I wrote this song I remember that it gave me a lot of strength as soon as i wrote it everything was out in front of me and i just knew what i had to do afterwards you know I, it's like i didn't know anything before that so this song is actually something that helped me get out of that situation which is huge like only i know how big big of a realization that was for me when i first heard this song um i the a part of me uh felt like okay this feels like uh, uh someone is talking to me maybe 
it kind of reminds me of a certain situation from my past where i must have been mad at someone and the other person is talking to me and kind of trying to make me understand uh, what's uh, or trying to make me just uh, calm down uh, yeah. or just apologizing to me but a part of me also felt and then when i heard it the second time is when i realized uh, that heaviness coming from your end and it being such a difficult thing for you uh, to kind of express um and i don't know for some reason i did have a hint that this is a is a situation in which this girl is probably not going to be happy even after this person uh, forgives her for what she's done it it did leave me with that sensation the, that was the second time i've kind of heard it properly it did leave me right. with that sensation of being in yeah. some sort of an emotionally uh, taxing situation and a much right. more complex than what it seems like in the first place yeah that's it actually like now that you said it it's very rare that that you actually think about the person singing that song and you think about i mean it happens obviously you get very curious when you listen to a song which is interesting for you but you can connect with somehow you it, but it's very rare that you put your put think about the person who's written that song you always put yourself in that situation and maybe like listening to it a couple of times you start thinking ki what was this person thinking like what was going on with them when they wrote the song it's very rare that that happens right. so that's why i thought it was interesting that you said that <laughs> the reason why i felt that happened was also because of the raw nature of your recording and it kind of brings your point of view in a much more uh, powerful way i think do you structure your songs in terms of verse chorus what is what is the kind of flow that you write on and what how did the lines kind of jaane bhi do chodo na aise kya tum naraaz ho meri wajah se and the first words kind of just come in like usually what i do is i when i'm just sitting with my guitar and you know when i feel like okay i've had enough enough of my emotions all bottled up and they need to come out now it's been a long time and since i told you like the nature of my relationship was a, was as such that i had very little opportunities to actually express myself to that person and to other other people because a lot of women a lot of men a lot of people who are in uh you know toxic relationships they try to hide these small details or they try to hide these things because they're too embarrassed to tell someone else they don't want yeah. to put someone else in a bad light right. even though they they want to talk about it but they're not able to it's difficult so um so what i did was i just sat with my guitar and you know i just pulled up my notes application on my phone and um the the emotions were so fresh in my mind that it just kind of just came out of me like because that's something that i really wanted to that was something that i used to say to my partner all the time kya tum naraaz ho mere is are you angry with me what's the matter you know these things so i just like started with that and the part where i sing uh, you know tare kheech laungi gaane bhi sunaungi that was you know just like literally if you translate it then when you're cons- trying to console someone you're trying to tell them how much they mean to you and what are the things that you would do for them you know and um i don't know man. like it's so difficult i haven't talked about this with yeah. anyone lately you know so it's difficult for me to explain but it just kind of happened like i i, I really don't have any kind of explanation right. but so like where i come from because i have been writing poetry you know i like to rhyme a lot i like i keep doing that so when i'm writing like for example i wrote a verse i'm thinking okay this is going to be the verse like this is what i want to say right now and then i'm writing it and then i'm just trying to uh, go inside my head and think okay this is a situation i'm writing about and then i start rhyming it you know just like how you would write a poem right so i intentionally i didn't write it as a song i actually write, wrote it as a poem 
and to be very very honest it just it just came out of out of me somehow right. like the first was and since i wrote the song more than i think 2 years ago so it's not really fresh in my mind how exactly i wrote it but i just know that i finished the song in like 15 minutes i was done because you know when there's a lot of pressure in a bottle you open it everything is just coming out right that's yeah. how i was feeling emotionally and that's exactly what happened and that's why i say that after i wrote the song i knew what i had to do which i didn't know for years so that's the kind of impact it had on dare ki chalaungi gaane pe suna it's very interesting to see like such an emotionally charged song uh that came out of like a spurt of uh just spurt of inspiration spurt of all the emotions kind of coming together and that uh happens very rarely as a songwriter mm. um yeah. songwriting is all about it's it's also a, it's also takes discipline it is also uh, you need to kind of sit and write on a regular basis you know it's a mixture of yeah. a lot of things but then there are those certain moments that it happens that you write something that kind of just it kind of does what it's supposed to you know it's a yeah. magical moment when you can write a song in 15 minutes <laughs> yeah yeah i think that happens when you don't force yourself to do it you know when when you're sometimes when you're really honest with how you're feeling because a lot of people we try to just kind of contain our emotions in a small little box and i think i, I think that's how this song just came about because i was finally able to face them you know at some point myself personally and that's why when whenever i talk about this song i, I I can never say that it was a difficult one for me to write. It was I think maybe the easiest of, uh, you know, kind of easiest poem I've ever written. Like within 15 minutes I just was like I feel so much better now. Like I just right. need to I'm okay now. That's how I felt. So you wrote the you wrote the words is what you're saying in the first, like you writing in that flow you wrote the words yeah Did you have the tune at the same time or that came later that came later i mean i i i didn't have the tune at first but i was just playing around with the ukulele and then i wrote the first rose i wrote uh, the verse and then i started playing around with the ukulele and then i came up with something and then the way the way then i kind of i mean there's not much no complexity in the song it's just yeah. four chords four or five chords max two verses it's done you right. know it was supposed to be like sweet and simple even for me so it was not something which i overly planned in my head okay this is not going right now ye acha nahi laga so right. when i was also coming up with the tune it was very simple like i would just like kind of talk to someone about it um, right. but of course like i listened to that song after i wrote it i listened to it a couple of times and i did change a few words here and there but that was pretty much it i it was pretty untouched afterwards i didn't change anything about it and honestly i didn't even think that i would share this song with anyone because like i said you know it, it had so much of a personal meaning attached to it and when you have something like that you want to keep it to yourself right right and i kind of remember the first time someone asked me to sing something i kind of sang and the song and i remember like i was just shivering i didn't know what to do i didn't know like how to sing the song and of course i met a couple of people on the way i got some opportunities to sing and this song was kind of always that one song that people connected with instantly right was this and one of the first that, songs uh, that you wrote it was not actually one of the first songs that i wrote i i had written in the past but i was just kind of 
not too confident at some at that point that I could could write. But I was writing a lot in English, and this okay. was maybe the second Hindi song that I did. Right. It was also like me trying to express myself in Hindi, you know, because right. I speak more in English. Try to try to write a couple of Hindi songs, but it's a bit difficult right now. <laughs> it's also yeah, it's it's challenging because we've grown up listening to Hindi music and poetry all our lives. That mm. how do you kind of say something new when there is so much that you've yeah. already seen and. There are such great writers and yeah. musicians that have done such brilliant yeah. work. So yeah. it's all the more difficult to kind of say different things and find different perspectives to say. Yeah, yeah, but I think I think for me it's not important that that you need to find something new to say because I think we're all human. You know, we all have the same emotions. It's all, you know, our foundation is the same. We listen to music to feel good, to feel sad, whatever, like to feel excited. And I think that I was also one of those people. I didn't want to sing in front of anyone because I thought I was not good enough because I, you know, obviously looked up to so many musicians. I knew that even in India, there's, crazy talent like insane yeah. amount of talent and i always thought that no 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 i don't think i can do this i can't sing I, this is just for me and me only if i start singing then you know there's the people are going to compare me and i'm not as good as this person i'm not as good as this person i don't have anything new to say everyone is already doing it but i think i found my voice when i told myself that it's not important if it's new or not it's in, it's important that I realized that what I'm saying is also as important because somewhere maybe you're giving someone else the strength to face their own emotions, you know. And, okay. and that's what happened. Like when I sang the song, when I sang Kya Tum Nara, so when I told people the story behind it, when I said that, you know, if you, if you are going through something similar, then you should know that you deserve much better because that's also something that I realized. And that is what clicks with people. They might forget the song, but you know, they won't forget how it made them feel. They won't forget in that moment how they felt. Right. Um, and I think that's, I mean, that is music for me. Like I, I love music that, that I can, that makes me feel something at some point, you know, makes me feel strong. And I think that's also something that unintentionally happened with the song. People started sharing their own stories with me and started saying, hey, I was also in an abusive relationship. Thank you for this song. It made me feel strong. It made me feel something, you know. Yeah. And I think that's like the most important thing to me as a musician. I don't that- care how many people are listening. Uh, I remember I was doing this gig, which I was not interested in doing at all because it was just not my scene. Because for me, like, I want to sit with people and sing to them. I don't want a big stage. I don't want a big audience because I myself still feel very jittery when I'm singing, you know, I'm still trying to find my balance. And um, so this place was just not my scene. And I was singing, of course I was singing and I was performing, but then my heart was not there. You know, sometimes that happens that you're not present there. Yeah, yeah. And by the end of it, uh, right before I was going home, this girl walks up to me. And she's like, this, you know, her body language is just, she's very closed. And then she's like, hey, I just wanted to tell you that whatever you sang today, you know, it meant so much to me. You have no idea. And she just started crying. <laughs> okay, she started crying. And she's like, you don't know what you've done for me tonight. Your songs are like, like something, something, something. She said, I couldn't even understand what you were saying. And I was just looking at, you know, my friends and the people who are around me. I was like, what is happening right now? And, and then she just ran away, you know, she couldn't even talk to me. And when that happened, it just kind of hit me that, okay, Tanna, you have to take your shit seriously because these things are having an impact on someone. Like out of thousand people, one person, it might just do something. And that was really like something very special for me. And when stuff like that happens, like you can't, you can't forget it. Ja, maybe, 
I was working with such easy chords i think um i mean there's not so much you can do with like a g and a c and a d you know like the, yeah, the very yeah. generic kind of chords yeah uh but i think i had like two tunes in my head two melodies and i went a little bit back and forth with it with it but then the melody which is now like remained and i just worked with that and I wanted to write more but after I finished the second verse I felt like I had said enough I felt like I had said whatever I wanted to say with the song and that's why the that song is so short right and it's just two verses and it's over yeah yeah how um, much do you think about structure when you're writing well I do think uh, uh, about the structure but I don't think very intensely about it I don't know if you've heard the rest of my songs like there are some of my songs on SoundCloud but usually they are very simple it's just a verse and a chorus a verse and a chorus very rarely you will find like a bridge right or something in between or right. a section dedicated to just instruments because right. I mean this is what I've realized is that for me the most important thing with when I write music is the words what I'm saying so the melody is something which just kind of happens i don't think too much about it like i really don't because i think when i actually start thinking too much about it then i don't like it one and something or the other doesn't work for me doesn't work out nothing mm-hmm. comes out of it so when i'm writing the melody and the, the the lyrics always go together but i always need a melody to start writing something Okay. But it can also happen sometimes the other way, you know. But Which it's always easier for song. me. Yes, my approach to music is it's just very simple because you know I don't know many chords on the guitar, and you know, you know, it's just I just want to say very simple things with the music and the lyrics with the lyrics of the song. Right. I don't want to make it complicated. Yeah. Uh... you know there's a similarity that i found uh, i don't know if it's true but it's something that i kind of noticed uh, between it's it's a it's a thing that i kind of go by in songwriting and that's basically uh, the quality of the lyrics should be such that they can be spoken in a conversation as well mm-hmm. it's it's a lot of times we put so much thought into what is the smartest way you know to put this line there and like you know how metaphors I, yeah like how can i add metaphors and how can i uh, which is also a great thing if you can develop it over time but yeah i feel the most important thing for uh, a song especially like when i'm writing is that will i be able, like are these the lines that i will use in my conversations uh and if mm-hmm. i fi- if i find the answer is yes then 9 out of 10 times i'll kind of keep I'll keep that line and i find yeah. that that is similar to uh your song writing at least in this song is what i felt one of my biggest inspirations for song writing is elliot smith i don't know if you know yeah, who elliot course. smith is yeah but his song writing like if you listen to his songs it really sounds like he is saying those things to you and you right. only yeah it's it's a conversation you're having with him and that's what i loved about his song writing and that's also an approach which i wanted to take with my song writing and just say what is necessary just say it in the most simplest way possible why did you kind of approach it in a way that you wanted to record it raw 
Hmm. But that was not the original idea. I wanted to record it properly in right. the sense that I thought about having more instruments. I thought about having more vocal layers. I did think of the song, you know, as a whole fuller with more instruments and um, these things. But um, I recorded the song before I left India. And after I came here, since, you know, Corona happened, the pandemic happened, I just kind of decided um, that I would just put it out the way it is right now. And later I will work on it, you know, like a, like, properly with other instruments but maybe i might not even do that now because i think it would take so much away from the song now but i did have uh, the idea to properly produce it with with other instruments but somehow it didn't happen it wasn't right. possible right and i just had this kind of this urge that that i need to put the song out what what was the equipment that you used to record this and did you record it yourself yes i was uh, with uh, my friend ryuksh uh, he's also someone who is managing me right now and okay. he's helping me and uh, we recorded it basically like in his house in his room with a very regular mic regular how do you call it a condensed mic condenser what do you call it? yeah condenser. condenser mic and uh, it was supposed to be the demo for the song since I told you that I right. wanted the song to be fuller. It was actually the demo which we recorded for the song. And he was just playing the guitar and he was saying, okay, we really need to record the song because we need to you know, get going with uh, the process. And I was like, okay. And then we recorded the demo and that was it. We didn't want to do anything. We just wanted to like go in the studio in a couple of weeks, get, you know, and actually start producing the song properly but that thing happened over they came to germany and then yeah well. that's just how we decided okay i think it's time and we just took like that leap of faith that maybe it is something that we should try try doing and it's been kind of great i mean i think i feel like this is something that i wanted i wanted the song to be out there raw and the way it is maybe right. i wouldn't have even liked you know the song being um, overtaken by other elements because i feel like the words for me are also really important oh, did you record your vocals and guitar separately or was that done together it was separate there were two different tracks okay there were two different tracks yeah there's like absolutely nothing there's just a guitar track and there's a vocal track and that's right. it it's as uncomplicated <laughs> as you can imagine so which track was it that had the car moving around was it your vocal or i think i think it was the guitar okay so i'm not sure right but that's also something that i really liked because Whenever I record it, if you go to my SoundCloud, whenever you have time, go to my SoundCloud and listen to my uh, playlist called Voice Memos. Okay. And I always upload it like directly from my phone, whatever I had recorded on my Voice Memo app. And always in the back, because I live in Noida, there's always something happening around construction. You know? like someone is, some child is talking in the back, or there's cars, or something. Or my cat is like meowing from the back. Right. I always like that kind of thing coming from the back. Those small elements, which makes it feel like it's homemade. Like I am sitting in my comfort zone right now inside my room. <clears throat> and just, you know, seeing it. And that's what I also liked with when we recorded this song, that somehow those ambient sounds have been captured and they're not overpowering or it's not like you can hear it separately. It's just in the back. It's just, it's, it's very wonderful and it happens very, very rarely that, you know, something yeah. that you put out that kind of connects so really rapidly. And then with, of course, with ARMR and all sharing it, it's, it's reached another level now. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, are you still pinching yourself over it or are you kind of over that? I have no idea how, what happened. Like it was a shock. Yeah. Never would have I thought 
that something like that happened with with me <laughs> you know uh, i just like woke up in the morning and just my youtube comments were just blowing up and i was like what is going on and my eyes were barely even open right and then i just read ar rahman so when i was like okay some random person is commenting some shit on, on my word or something and then i started to see like many other people writing that and then i had to go and confirm it and it was the actual reality it's just a wonderful feeling for me to even like see that you know an honest song kind of just reaching people you know and yeah i really hope that you keep coming out with such beautiful honest music and uh, people still keep listening and the number of people listening to your music just keeps on growing Congratulations on the wonderful reviews and everything that song has uh, offered you and uh, I'm I can't wait for the next stuff that you come out with. Yeah, I am going to release something very very soon. <laughs> awesome. But um thank thank you so much for having me and thank you so much for asking me these very important questions because I very seldom get to talk about these things and um It was really lovely talking to you, and I'm also looking forward to listening to your music since I haven't yet. I'm it's, gonna uh, do that now. Yes, it's up everywhere. Uh, you can put on yeah. my EPs called Paper Boots. Also, when you spoke about uh, the the uh, ambience and the cat and everything, uh, if you yeah. if you play my EP, I'd urge you to play it from the intro. This yeah, okay? Okay. I shall do that. <laughs> I'll do awesome. That. Awesome. Thank you so much, and uh, I hope you come back to India soon, and you have a great time in India. <laughs> Thank you.